It is time to get over to the kingpin, Brian Malone, as he checks in with his tag team partner, their Beer City Bruiser. It's backstage with the bouncers here on the Wrestling Podcast About Nothing. All right, Michael. So it sounds like you're having a bit of a rough go of it. So I'm going to have to pick up the pieces here and uh, make something of this podcast, even though I'm on the road. I'm with Ring of Honor. We're, I was in Baltimore this past Friday night, and right now I'm sitting at the 2300 Arena, Philadelphia, Pennsylvania, and I'm with uh, – I, I've had a lot of partners in wrestling. I have a partner on this podcast who's obviously, as the fans can hear, less than subpar. I'm with the best partner I've ever had in any facet of professional wrestling. I am with my tag team partner, the Beer City bruiser bruiser thank you man what's going on oh thanks for having me uh you told me you have a subpar podcast partner so uh you wanted you wanted to know he show him what it feels like when teams work together so i was glad to come on and show him that yeah he michael it is and i don't know how familiar you are with the podcast i'm just gonna assume you're not but he takes a lot of joy in my misery um we even did a segment recently where he found all these nasty things people were saying about me online and he really enjoyed it he really like was like giddy with with the fact that people were ripping me well that sounds like a big bully like guy has got what no self-esteem i'm assuming he probably lives in his mom's basement type thing yeah so like he gets (laughs) He gets, like, joy out of other people's misery. Like, you're a great person. You're a great partner. If he got to know you, you know what I mean? Like, he'd, he'd respect that. Yeah, you know, I mean, I've known him for a long time. And you, you would think, right? You would think, like, he's that type that lives in his mom's basement, things like that. But he has a beautiful family. Just, he just had a son. He has a beautiful wife. Like, it's a complete, like, oxymoron here. You would think this guy is like, yeah, somebody who's like an internet troll lives in their basement. But in reality, he's just a troll in real life. He's probably going to cut. He edits this, by the way. So he's going to cut. This might hit the cut room floor so bruiser here we are we're at the 2300 arena um i've talked about it on this show the last time we were here what what a moment uh, me you and silas main eventing ecw arena against the bullet club the hottest act in pro wrestling six days before all in like i've conveyed my feelings on that but please for the fans of this show share your feelings Oh, it, it's amazing. Uh, dream come true. Um, you're a wrestling fan like myself. We grew up in the ECW era, you know, and to main event at an iconic wrestling venue like the 2300 Arena, the ECW Arena. Not only that, but I was in the ring with my best friends against, like you said, the hottest ticket in professional wrestling you know and it wasn't just a match where all oh, you know we're gonna get squashed and all that it, we went out there and we showed the world not not just philadelphia we showed the world what we can do you know as a tag team as a six man against the top act you know and i think we turned a lot of heads with that and i was i was giddy for god a week after i, I kept reliving it in my head then when it came on tv all that feeling came back, and I was I, I remember texting you going, man, this was that was amazing, you know what I mean like i didn 't sleep at all that night i don 't think you did either. It was just amazing no i I, I drove home by it was funny, I drove by myself home, and i like i didn 't touch caffeine till like I was like two hours away from home it 's about six like a six five five and a half six hour drive home, and i didn 't even have to touch caffeine because I was just such on such a a high from that, like I said, yeah, growing up in the era we did. To be in this building, period, but then to main event in this building, main event with those guys, pretty special. I mean, we've gotten to do some cool things. I mean, this past Friday night, we wrestled for the second time the World Tag Team Champion, the Briscoes. I've stood on here. The Briscoes are like you know my favorites i think i think yeah. they are like the realest guys in pro wrestling we talked about promos last week and and we talked about that i brought them up as like they have like the most authentic promo style like in pro wrestling to me like they they are believable because they are them they are just them to the bone on yeah. camera behind the scenes like the briscoes are the briscoes you know what did you think of our i i loved our match friday night what, what did you think well, I want, to, I want to go back to the to the philly match before that because uh what, what fans might not or your podcast might not remember that's when you you and I became a team was here in Philly you, you had wrestled Kenny King that night and Silas was in the middle of the feud with Kenny and you became the third member and then you and I became the, the tag team that was the start of of this great tag team was was that night in Philly and then you fast forward you know almost a year later and we were main eventing as a tag team in that building like that I just wanted to touch on that it was amazing but yeah yeah so exactly so here, here's an ironic twist on that too and it's a team for whatever reason people seem to compare us to and I think it's because they left right before and now we're the big you know the big big guy tag team here in ring of honor um but it's war machine it's funny so the parallel is like 
we, we joined together in Philadelphia. We've had our biggest moments so far, probably in Philadelphia. It was the same thing for those guys, so it's, it's kind of funny. Yeah, no, and, and it's great to be compared to those two guys. Uh, I've wrestled them. I wish we could have wrestled them as the bouncers against them because we'd tear it down. I mean, I'm sure we will. You know what the future holds. Uh, but going to the Briscoes match, man, that was my favorite match. My social media blew up saying it was the best match that we've had with them. You know, um, I wrestled them numerous times, but, but Friday just it clicked. I think all four of us were on the same page. We made it look like we went out there and did what we wanted to do. We wanted to make it look like a fight. And at any moment, we could have beat them. And that's what the fans all thought. And that's what we wanted. You know what I mean? I, I really think we turned heads with that match. Yeah, I, I agree. And, I mean, it helps that we just went out there and just beat the dog shit out of each other. I think <laughs> I think that helps. I think for whatever reason, these sick people like it when uh, yeah. us and the Briscoes just beat the absolute shit out of each other. <laughs> um, but I, I love it. It was, so much, it was so much fun. The toast afterwards, very cool. Yeah. That's, I mean, it's their de facto hometown. Baltimore is like I mean we're in an arena um, I mean that's the other thing too to touch upon here I mean just in my time here and you've been here longer than I have so you've seen it even even more so but the growth of this company and to be here at this time with this company like talk about it from the standpoint of like when you came in the door till like this moment Oh, when I first came in, we weren't wrestling in the buildings. I, I came in right at the beginning of the change. And so uh, I, we'd wrestle in buildings. I remember going to towns, you know, like Baltimore or, um, you know, in Milwaukee and stuff like that. And they're like the small thousand seat venues and stuff. And then uh, I remember Supercard of Honor in Florida. It was a 4,000 seat building and it was sold out. And I remember going, okay, there's something here. And then it hit me again when we were in New Orleans. And, and I think it was you and I just sat there. We're like, look at this. Like, look where we're at right now. And I think every single time, every building we go to, I mean, you've said it before. I've said it to you. You know, WWE just ran here. NXT just ran here. WCW used to run here back in the day. Like, and now we're doing that. The growth of this company is amazing, and it's only getting bigger. You know, they're turning fans away at the doors when they run these bigger venues. You know, the TV ratings are through the roof, you know. Um, Look at all the TV time guys are getting. Like, guys like us, you know, at first we were just, you know, kind of dark matches, kind of mid-card guys. But now we're getting, you know, great matches. We're getting good TV time. They're letting us, you know, become our characters by cutting promos, you know. We were at pre-tapes yesterday for almost eight hours, (laughs) you know. I mean, it it was fun. I love it. I love it. Speaking of which, speaking of the Devils, Jay Briscoe, Jay Briscoe, we're recording a podcast here. I don't know if you want to say hi. How we doing, folks? Good to be here. Nice to see y'all. Well, I can't really just, see you, but... <laughs> we just talked about our match Friday night, so very appropriate that you that you walked over. So appreciate you, <laughs> Jay Briscoe. One of the, I mean, and, and it's funny he walked over, but just this this locker room and 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 the people in it. You know, for me coming here, I'm sure it was for you the same way. But like, you almost like develop like this. Like, you go there and you see the guys there, and you're like, well, I want to work this guy, I want to work that guy, I want to want to wrestle this guy, I want to wrestle that guy, and for me. I mean, we've gotten to work. We got to work Cody in the box. We got to work um, with the Briscoes. So it's just, it's like checkbox, checkbox, checkbox. I mean, uh, I mean Jay Lethal, and, and, and I know you've done some stuff with Jay, but like another guy on that list. Um, I mean, the, the, the roster here is deep, talented, and insane. And there's guys on this roster I never thought I'd want to wrestle with, and then I wrestled them, and we had great matches. Like Jonathan Gresham, I've never been like, oh, I want to wrestle Gresham. I think he's a phenomenal wrestler. And we actually wrestled in Vegas, and it was like, okay, this is two different styles. I mean, I'm the brawler. He's the technical wrestler. It was an amazing match, you know, and that's the great thing about this roster. There's not one person you can look at in this locker room and go, ah, I don't want to work him tonight. That's going to be a shit match. Ah, I don't know about this guy. Every guy you look at, it's like, we can do something with him. We can do something with him. You and I have said numerous times, like, hey, it'd be great if we could work so-and-so. Like, Killer Elite Squad, you and I have said, hey, we, it'd be awesome to tie up with them. Uh, the stuff we've been doing with the Briscoes, like... It's amazing, you know, and, and I'm hoping that we become bucket list guys. You know what I mean? Like guys look at us and go, oh, I can't wait to wrestle the bouncers, you know? Yeah, and that, I mean, that's I mean that's the goal here. That's the goal for, like, anybody here. When you think of just the history of this company, I mean, I, I've made no secret on this show, my relationship with Todd Sinclair, who's been here since the beginning, mm-hmm. and the things he's seen and the guys he's seen come through here. And, and I think what's kind of changing now before this place was like a springboard and i think it's becoming a destination or it has become a destination yeah. um rather than just like a springboard platform to something else so i mean I, I, it's funny and i'm sure you get it all the time too people are like oh you gotta you gotta go to wwe or nxt it's like man i am happy right 
right where I am. Like for right, like right now, this is exactly where I want to be. Yeah. I always, whenever they toss me though, do you want to work for WWE? Do you want to work for NXT? I always say, why do I want to move? I'm happy right here. Uh, I'm just getting started right here because when I first started out singles, then they put me with Silas. Now I'm with you. Like the evolution of the Beer City Bruiser is constant, and here we're allowed that creative freedom. You and I text almost daily with ideas of what we should do and all that we walk up to pants and we say hey this is our idea we walk up to the office guys and and, hey this is an idea they either run with it or they don't but at least they let us come up with these ideas you know what i mean uh when it comes to our matches yeah we have agents for our matches but it's pretty much what we want to do you know and then there's always guys in this locker room that will approach us after and go hey that was really good but maybe do this next time so why would i want to leave a place where i can constantly grow you know what I mean? I'm not saying that it's never going to happen. I'm just saying right now, I'm not looking anywhere. I'm happy. You know, this is a great company to be with. We're growing, and it's fun, you know? Yeah, I mean, I think I think from, I guess probably more from the guys in wrestling, you get the questions a lot about what's the locker room like or what's it like there, and it's just like... It's literally the best locker room I've ever been in. And that's not just me spouting a company line. I mean, I've said I'm I'm not under contract to this company. So, you know, I I love working here and and it's, you know, I love it. But it's I'm not like betrothed to say these things. Uh, This locker room and the guys in it, like I've always felt like this. I I don't think I've ever came through the curtain where somebody wasn't willing to like give advice or, hey, I noticed this. Hey, maybe try this. Hey, that was great. But hey, you know what I mean? Just I've heard you talk about on different podcasts, but somebody who's been so helpful to us that's that's bully ray like yeah. what a what a tremendous person to have around and to pick their brain yeah and, and he goes out of his way to watch our stuff and he will pull us aside like a pre-tapes you know like him making fun of you is not him making fun of you because he's doesn't like you it's him making fun of you because he's trying to help you and become better and he had advice for us up the wazoo last night after after we were done with our pre-tapes you know every match we come back he'll walk up and goes guys that was good but what about this you know and like i mean he's been in the business forever he's a hall of famer <laughs> um you know i mean he's done it all and seen it all you know and and having a guy like him help us is amazing you know what i mean plus the creative power of like 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 you said todd sinclair like that guy's seen the evolution of ring of honor you know and he knows if we pitch him idea yeah that won't fit in ring of honor he knows because he's been here since day one you know and then you guys got like christopher daniels bj whitmer you know that are just quick to help us you know like hey well how is this how is this you know it it just it feels good you know what i mean yeah it's a great feeling and i am under contract but i don't have to say that (laughs) you know and 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 what i like about this locker room is you never feel uncomfortable in it you know what i mean like there's locker rooms you walk in you're like okay there's a click over here there's a click over here there's a you know this guy doesn't like this guy in this locker room it's that doesn't happen it's we all come in we all say hi yeah we sit by each other in certain places but at some point in time we're all hanging out you know what i mean yeah it's everybody's working hard everybody's working towards a common goal a common purpose and that's to continue the rise of this company and to just continue going in the same direction that that we've been uh which kind of guess brings me to the next thing and it's, it's again it's one of the things that people always bring up to ring of honor and that's in april Saturday night before WrestleMania, New York City. I mean, I know it's I know it's on my mind, and I know it's on your mind. But um, and I, again, everybody's from on this podcast is familiar with my thoughts. But talk about uh, if you could, like, what would you know? I, and me, I'm envisioning me and you standing in the center of the ring, MSG. You know, talk about it. Well, first of all, Supercard of Honor is the biggest show in Ring of Honor history, and and you've gotten to experience that, which is you know, and I've told you, I think before your first super card like man you're never going to experience something like this again and i kind of lied because now we have msg (laughs) the biggest venue and you know most famous venue in professional wrestling and you're right we get to stand in the middle of that ring no matter what we do in madison square garden for ring of honor on the biggest wrestling weekend ever and whatever we do it's going to be great you know and i just i get goosebumps thinking about it i remember Every wrestler has a bucket list, you know, and on the bucket list, mine had MSG. And with Ring of Honor, I've been able to check off stuff like go to Japan, work the ECW arena, work Hammerstein, uh, work in Milwaukee at, at certain venues. And I was, okay, I checked this off. I checked this off. And my wife would always go, well, what about Madison Square Garden? I'd be like, ah, oh, you know what? I just, I don't see it happening. Then they made the announcement. Oh, I was like a little kid, man. Like, this is, 
goosebumps. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, we get to wrestle, and, like, it still hasn't sunk in, and I don't think it'll sink in until after we're done, that, hey, we just wrestled in Madison Square Garden. <laughs> you know, that's a great thing. Yeah, I mean, yeah, and just ha- we'll be happy to be a part of that if we are, if we're so fortunate. But, I mean, in my mind, I'm picturing, like, it's us and, like, the Briscoes or whoever, the t- yeah. World Tag Team Champions of the time, and we're beating their asses and becoming the World Tag Team Champions. I don't know about you, Bruiser. That's what I'm envisioning. Oh, yeah, that's definitely what I'm envisioning. That would be a career highlight. <laughs> you know, like, I would get that picture framed and, and hung on the wall for sure. <laughs> and well, I'm sure we'll drink a few beers after after uh, we'll go around New York and close a couple bars. And bars in New York are open to 4 a.m. Yeah, and there's a, there's usually a guy that comes to Supercard or like the big shows in New York where he'll close his bar and open up just to the boys and all the drinks are free and all that. So I'm really, hoping, oh yeah, I'm hoping he's there. <laughs> we'll close the bar. Really, that would be that would be something. Like, yeah, what would be more legendary than that or the after party? Uh, it's gonna be 50 <laughs> 50. <laughs> so I mean, it, it, it's kind of ridiculous sitting here. We're in the ECW arena. Um, this venue that so many historic things have happened it's been it's been important to both of our careers both as singles and then tag team so i mean i talk about all the time what i think's coming next but what do you tell the fans this podcast what do you think's next for us i know what i think is next for us what do you think i I think we're gonna get tag team gold uh i think we're gonna get that big push in ring of honor we've been turning heads every match we've had um we've wrestled the smallest guys in the company we've wrestled you know guys close to our size we've wrestled the big names the bucks the briscoes and and we've hung with them we've proven to everybody so i think a big things are coming i think more tag team title shots i think a tag team title run is coming our way you know um i definitely think the bouncers are here to stay and I, i do think our future is bright I agree, man. So now, now the other thing that we got to see, we got to get our butts. Like, so there's got to be, pro- and, and and we are we are talking to different promoters about probably probably more towards 2019 at this point. But you know, New England promoters especially like need to have the Bruiser in New England come to my territory. We'll rip it up. We'll have fun. We'll kick some ass. Um, there was a common date that we or a date that we that we had in mind, but you're, you're going to be on a cruise, so I mean, <laughs> uh, but hey, it, it'll work out at some point. I can't wait to have you come up there and and, and we show the you know show the people up in New England. We're going to show the people of New England what we can do in, in a month. Um, so uh, no no surprise, probably a lot of the listeners of this podcast are from the New England area, but we got some big matches coming up, and and, and we probably can't reveal them yet here, so we'll we'll hold our tongue as to what those <laughs> matches are. But we're coming to Lewiston, Maine. And we're coming to to Lowell, and, and I, I can't wait. Oh, I can't wait either. Um, I mean, we got the Lewis in Maine. I, we've never wrestled in Maine before. I don't think Ring of Honor's ever been to Maine. And Lowell, your hometown, like, we've had some good times there too. Isn't that where we, that's where we wrestled LIJ, I believe. It is, it is, yeah. That's that's where we took on LIJ and like Lowell. It's still to this day. I could probably wrestle for I don't even know how many more years. I, I'll never have more matches than I've had in in the city of Lowell. It's a very special. Like ten minutes up the road is where I worked the majority of, of the indie shows for Chaotic Wrestling that I've worked in my career. Yeah, and 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 have a match like LIJ that we had, which was another great match. You know, and now it's global wars again. So who knows? Maybe they'll put some more Japanese guys against us, which will make us turn heads in New Japan. You know, which. I, that's another you're asking about the future of us i think we're going to dominate japan to be honest i think they're going to see you again they're going to love you they're going to love us i've already been over there i've already made an impact i think you coming over with me is going to turn a lot of heads and i think we could be that dominating force kind of like our good friends war machine you know they went over there and they dominated you know what i mean so yeah i think i mean I, when i think about us and i think about the things we've been able to accomplish this year and for me this has been setting the table for us the next couple months are going to really set us up for i think yeah and i'm right there with you i think in 2019 the bouncers we are going to be the world the ring of honor world tag team champions we are going to go to japan i think we have big things um so before we wrap up here we got things to do mike we can't do this all day like we got to go do some shit <laughs> um Tell everybody, you know, where to follow you on social media, pro wrestling tees, all that good stuff. Yep, on social media, I'm the Beer City Bruiser. Instagram, also the Beer City Bruiser. Uh, Twitter, I'm at BCB Winchester. Uh, pro wrestling tees is www.prowrestlingtees.com slash Beer City Bruiser. Also go to ROHWrestling.com, go to their shop. I have a new shirt out and uh, koozie. 
All right. Well, you heard it. Go there. Go to my pro wrestling tees, BrianMalonis.com. Crockett, you better have plugged it on the stuff you recorded. And if you're lucky, I'll try to track down a couple more people. Uh, I can't keep Bruiser too much long. He's already like six deep here. He's got some drinking to do. I got some stuff to do. So, Mike, I'll do my best to get to get somebody here to join us soon. Thank you, Bruiser. Thank you. Thanks for having me. For more on the wrestling podcast about nothing, subscribe to us wherever you get your favorite podcasts or find us on our website, thewpan.com. That is thewpan.com.